I'm Sean. Hi everybody, I'm Lynn. I hope you're having the most fantastic days today. Absolutely fantastic and magical day today. Guys, listen, today's video has been inspired by uh, a wee visitor we had in our garden, in our healing grid, in our garden a few days ago. Those of you are on Facebook uh, have seen the wee uh, status update. We sent a photograph asking us to send a wee bit of healing energy. A stray cat has been coming into our garden and has started sleeping on the, the healing grid and you know every time we get close to it um, it bolts it looks like a big tom cat like a male cat and he has cuts on his face oh he's an old boy isn't he he's an old boy so we got inspired we, we kept our distance we sent some uh, regular healing towards and just let him soak up and every time we sort of went close he got down off the, the crystal healing grid he went into the wood at the back but as soon as we walked away, I got back in again and it started laying in different sections, leaning up against the crystals and soaking up energy. So we could we could sense that it was actually picking up the, the healing energy from it. So we've been inspired to do this video and we've been trying to be doing it for the past year. We time. have actually about talking talking to you about how crystals can really help animals and pets. Now we're gonna to talk to you about our experience that we've used with, with crystals with animals. And um, often we've we've heard from other people that are obviously subscribers and friends of ours who've been following us. And they actually say about their animals and they've been using crystals and the results have been magnificent, haven't yeah. they? And if you think about it, you know what I mean, isn't it? If you believe in the energy of the crystals and you believe in that we're all vibrational energy, and so why shouldn't it affect you know, animals the same way it affects the humans? You know what I mean? There's no difference in reality. Absolutely, When it yeah. comes to the vibration, and just you're out of the box and you're out of the box. And and animals are so sensitive to crystal energy, it's amazing. Like, nobody tells them about crystals, they just know that you have that really strong instinct. And um, our experience with Rusty, as you know, we had a wonderful dog for, for many years called Rusty, who sadly passed over to spirit last year. But his final, final like, years with us, he was, he was an old boy, and he just sensed the crystal energy all the time. Yeah. And when we moved house three years ago to this part of Ireland, when we was unpacking all the crystals out in the garden, we was getting them all out to charge them all up. And we had crystals like this, all, you know, big crystals, all funny shapes, not the most comfortable. And we had this lovely lawn for him to lie on, but he, he just chose to lie all over these big... Actually completely on <laughs> top of the crystals. Completely over the top of them. And they were sharp like this, they weren't comfortable. He was just lying all this over, and we couldn't we believe realize it. We realised that we could bring it back to that section of journey for us to, you know, and that's when his health did start deteriorating. And we, we genuinely believe that he was seeking out, you know, that comfort, that healing energy from us. We stress then, and we're stressing again now, guys, when, it, when you know our, if you're familiar with our channel, you know our views on crystal healing, crystal therapy, working with animals, working with humans. It has to be taken into the whole context of the person. We don't believe that any particular crystal will cure any one thing. We don't believe that. We certainly believe that it can contribute and can help alongside other factors. So if an animal is sick, you have to see a wee fly. Okay. Yeah. We have a fly in the room that keeps flying past them. We can't get him out. So if you wonder what this is, it's not a fairy, guys. <laughs> it is a fly. <laughs> so, guys, basically, what we you always say to you is this. Don't be giving your power away to a crystal or a crystal therapist or a healer or even a doctor, by the way. If your animal is sick in any shape or form, seek a qualified medical yes. effect. Absolutely, yeah. That's the first and foremost. If you happen to be sick and you've been ill or anybody belonging to you is ill, seek doctor's help, first of all. Don't give your power away to a vet or a doctor, by the way, automatically, because there's a lot of unscrupulous doctors out there who haven't got a clue about health and just give you a pill for a particular thing or prescribe something willy-nilly because book says... And the same with vets. Same as vet, they'd be ripping you off and getting the dog, things like that. And so we're asking you to really use your own discretion, but if you're sick or if your animal's sick, we would say to seek the appropriate medical thing first. Don't just run out and grab a crystal. No. Same way we did. Because it could be something Rusty. really serious. But crystals are great to use alongside medical help as well. So Rusty, he had congestive heart disease in, in his final years. And um, obviously the vet could only help so far with, with tablets to help his quality of life. But what we also did, we used crystals as well. We, we put a few around his basket. And of course we've got so many in the home, he would just instinctively go up to them, he'd know all the time. Even last year when we did our healing grid out for the summer solstice, you may remember the so video. He was so poorly at the time. He was so poorly um, and he was just standing there by this big crystal. Otherwise he's standing there by, you couldn't move him away, but it was so funny. And um, 
it just proves how they just know they go for the healing. It really does help them. It's the same with, with this poorly cap we've got now lying on our crystal grid. All crystals, not the most comfortable to lie on when he has the rest of the law and he's just choosing to lie on there. It's just incredible. So it's all about energy, guys. And as I say, I do believe that animals are more sensitive to energy, uh, to nature, than us humans are because obviously they haven't got Facebook or YouTube to be distracting them, the mm -hmm. television or the radio or the junk food or whatever like that. You know, I mean, they're close to nature. So therefore, they would be able to resonate more with a particular vibration or a positive vibration. That's why, you know, dogs, you know, would be able to walk around and other animals, of course, would be able to sense what a particular plant would do, you know, to, to consume, to actually help themselves yeah. and things yeah. like that. So we would generally be believers that crystals can help a person. We also believe they can help animals. What we would say to you is, is that when you're working uh, with an animal, you know what I mean, it's respect their space, respect their vibration. Don't automatically say, I tell you before, if you've gone down the route with the fat and things like that, we fly there and have some positive manager. <laughs> but basically, um, you know, work with you know your 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 medical provider, your doctor and your vet. Let them just do what they can do, but what you can do is certainly try to comfort the animal. See if there's any particular crystal that they're drawn to. Is that cat, dog, rabbit, budgie, anything like that starting to attract itself towards a particular crystal. We would say be very careful. If you look at these we um you know these are or like twenty three, um it's almost sweet like. So although dogs and other animals can be quite, you know, smart and things like that, don't be putting things like this in place where they may swallow them. Actually they might think it's a sweet and but although they they sniff and they are good um God forbid that you think and they swallowed it. I mean, you've no dogs swallowing wedding rings and everything. You hear these stories, so don't put crystals that are too small in places they can eat. If you're tucking it under the basket in places they can't get to, that's what we'd recommend. And using crystals that is not easy for them to swallow. The same with young children as well. Hundred percent, and be careful if you're putting any sharp crystals down, like clusters or like larger pieces. They don't have any there, but larger pieces of crystals with the dog or cat or animal could roll over on. So don't automatically assume, oh this crystal here is going to be fantastic and you start leaving it to the side of the, the animal's bed, the basket, when they're recuperating and then lo and behold the dog or animal, or even the horse by the way, could roll over in the bed. And so the thing we say is be very careful that you're not putting you know, the animal in any sort of you know, position that it could be harmed by putting a crystal on it. But choose crystals that you feel intuitively drawn to, that you want to, like if you think about it, that you, you know, I know it's a cliche, but like rose quartz, Amethyst, a um, couple of other crystals are you Celestite, Celestite, Celestine, yeah, 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 Celestine. Yeah, yeah, and nice. these gentle yeah. crystals you'd be putting around to relax the human. Ones to use vans, yeah. You've got a, a flighty dog or a cat, and what are you using them two animals? Because we go in here all, all different types of animals, but if you've got a, an animal that's quite flighty or quite nervous, has been through abuse and things like that, well, you don't want to be putting like a moldavite or any of the high vibrational stones there because say, it's going to make the animal. Because stop you sleeping trifle. if you're using it in the basket. So uh -huh. if you've got to say a rescue dog or an animal, um, obviously respect the space, listen to your, your the advice from the you know the the cur dog, the dog society who you've got a dog from, the animal shelter. Um, but place nice gentle crystals around the basket, slowly introduce them to see if it starts resonating. If the dog happens to get up and walk away from it and lies in another side of the room, that's your sign to say, look, pull back from that, it's not working. You know what I mean? So what was trying to observe, if you happen to see, you place a couple of crystals on the ground, see if your dog will go over and sniff at it, maybe lie beside one particular crystal, start to observe, start to work with that vibration. You know when the animal's had enough healing, because whether it's doing Reiki, or, or other energy healing, or crystal healing, it will take so much and then it will walk away. Yeah. When we were doing healing on, on Rusty, we know we would love it for a bit, he'd lie there, then he'd suddenly get up and walk away, you know he's had enough, so don't force too much on an animal. Now, so the question you ask him, well, how do I do it? How do I use crystals with animals? Well, there's lots of different ways. We've mentioned about putting it around the animal and it under the basket as well and around the basket. Now, obviously, it's difficult to put crystals actually on an animal because dogs and especially cats jump off. And to keep them still long enough to put crystals on, however small, it's difficult. So again, you don't want to be using big, heavy crystals if you are placing it on, on them, to, even temporarily. So the, the ways you can use, you can work off the animal. Okay. Now, you can obviously use all different types of crystals, which everyone's you feel drawn to. Put them in the hand, use them around the animal, as in this case, like selenite ones, which you can actually brush over the animal as well, off the body. And this will help to cleanse their aura and help, help to heal any 
imperfections in the oil and anything they're going through as well. And also one of the best ways we found is actually to make a grid because in that way you don't have to use the crystals at all physically on the animal. And what you could do is, we, we actually put the links down below where we actually show you how to make a crystal grid for animals. And we actually did this on one of our friends, Bunny Haywood. And he made such a great recovery afterwards, which was wonderful. So we would recommend this with, with anybody with animals, is doing a crystal grid, using the crystals you feel instinctively drawn to do, and then send healing to that grid and for whatever ailment your animal is going through. It's all vibrational energy, guys. I know for some of you who should be watching this, could be ready to scorn or ready to you know, ridicule it, it's not going to happen. But I would like to think that you're, you're watching it, you're open enough minded to watch it in the first place. But if you think of everything in life here is vibrational energy. And that's when you're working with crystal energy, it's the exact same thing. It's working on the vibrational level of the healing aspect. Obviously if a dog's got a broken leg, you have to repair the broken leg. But remember this here, there's also a lot of trauma involved in the dogs. The, the mentality of it's been damaged as well because of the, the injury, so you're uh -huh. trying to recoup that, so you want to bring it down, as Lynn says, you can be placing, you know, the selenite okay. down the side of the basket, you can actually be putting crystals around it, um, as Lynn says, if you could be sitting holding, if a crystal, if a cat happens to be sitting on your lap, you could actually be holding the crystal in one hand, and with the other hand, stroking you could be it, stroking it uh -huh. and you're transferring that energy through you, through the crystal, through your hand, into whatever animal this is. Yeah, in the especially always make sure you use a smooth crystal because if you're using it directly on the end, you're actually pushing it across, um, which is one of the wonderful ways of doing it. If you use one too sharp and just scrape you're scraping the, the, the fur and the skin of the animal, a flat one is ideal or a small tumble stone. Guys, there's a book we got years ago and it's called Crystal Healing for Animals. Now, as I say, this is uh, by Martin Scott and Gail Mariani. Check this book out. We actually like their, their stay in it and we it's like their book. thought because they do also say about you know, making sure you go to a doctor, making sure you go to the vet aspect of it. There's a lot of books out there, a lot of people just automatically give, expect you to give your power away to the crystal, hang it up like some guru and wave it about and cancer is going to go and different things like that. Uh, they're probably the same wavelength as we are and that's why we would say, so it's called Crystal Healing for Animals. I'm sure you can get it in your library or you can certainly get it online. Check it out and there's good information talking about grids and elixirs and things like that. Yeah, elixirs as well, it's another way. Um, crystal elixirs, and we'll cover that in a completely different video because it's quite an in-depth topic. So we won't really cover it briefly here. You can use crystal elixirs in their water as well, as long as you're using quartz-based crystals and not minerals that can dissolve. But we'll cover that again. And also flower remedies. Flower remedies. We've had great success yeah. with flower remedies. I and mean, we've got a video already made yeah. on flower remedies, black flower remedies. So we fly there. <laughs> this fly keeps, so if you go to where eyes are going like that, it's not that we're not looking at you guys, it says this fly flying about like this, so we're like, where is it now? <laughs> it's, uh, it's soaking up that healing energy. It really is, again, fly loves the, um, the crystals too. <laughs> so guys, what we would say to you is this, um, you know, be open-minded, turn around and look at your pet companion as, um, as you would with somebody else, even yourself. Not everything is going to resonate with you, so don't automatically give your power away to all sorts of books and just say, oh, uh, this crystal here is going to do this, that and the other. Try to observe because if you've got a pet in your life and, you, and it's part of your family, then you know we're, what we're talking about is the truth. You can communicate with that animal. That animal communicates with you. You know where it's eyes, you know where it looks at you, you know where it resonates with you, you know there's something not right. The same way you would, I would know if there's something not right with Linda or Linda has something not right with me, there's something going on in, in the background. I go, are you okay? And she'll share something with me or vice versa or something in her mind. That communication between humans is also within animals. Animals are far more astute than we are, and they will be sending you messages and what sort of things like that. And just observe them whenever you're working with the energy of crystal, because the last thing you want to do is to invade a human space when it comes to therapies, it comes to healing. Mm -hmm. So sacred space, this is my sacred space, Lynn's sacred space. So we don't force our views on the anybody else or our healing energy on the anybody else, and don't do it with an animal observe as Lynn said, if the animal gets up and starts walking away, for goodness sake, don't walk after it and say, no, I'm going to give it more, I'm going to give it more. Respect it. It's space. tempting to want to give more and more, but the animal, you always animal. know when they walk away, they leave, they've had See, They're more tuned to it than we are, so basically, we'd say, there has to be, it's only five minutes to set there. Five minutes there. healing to them is like is there three hours to, to yeah. us, <laughs> to them, you know, the equivalent when you think of it. So just a quick recap, you can certainly use crystals within, after you've seen uh, veterinary advice, things like that. Be careful that you don't place them in a position that the animal could actually swallow or roll over and get injured with them. 
uh, observe your animal, the animal relation. Is it moving away from the particular thing? Is it lying beside it? You know, are we dog rusty as we say? You know, it loved crystal energy. It was there. And we knew before, one minute you think it was fine, next minute you look over and he's starting to hog the big crystal. You'd be lying down beside a big crystal, blowing sides. You know, <laughs> and we knew that, okay, there's something. And then lo and behold, two days later, he gets a wee bit of a relapse or something happens. So observe your animal. Uh, certainly seek medical help first and foremost. And uh, be intuitive and just let us know what you think. Have you any experiences with this here? Please share them with us. Yeah, please let us know your experience of using crystals with animals. We'd love to know. If you have got any links to your own websites and things like that, please let us know because not only are we interested, we know from reading all of them, and we read every single one of the comments, they're like, other people love reading them too. Do you know what I mean? So if you haven't have a, a YouTube channel there or a website that you actually you know, advocate working with uh, crystal energy or any other energy with our animal relations, please put the links down below. Absolutely, guys. So, guys, listen, we'll wrap this up. I'm sure it's a long video. I'm sure it is. Sorry, guys, it's going to be long. But we, we try to always keep the videos as short as possible. But for us to get the information we want to get out there, um, it's not always easy. So, no, <laughs> Guys, listen, you could follow our other channel. It's um, all about crystals, where obviously it's all about crystals. And we've got another channel, Dream of Avalon Meditations, where we upload meditations that helps you bring yourself into a beautiful, tranquil, central place where you can go on. And you can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. We'd love to have you here. We've got a lot of exciting things happening. Lots of new stuff. <laughs> and watch out uh, for next week. We're going to probably make a bit of an announcement here on the channel that we want you to uh, have a wee look and see. Absolutely. So I want to send you loads of love and loads of happiness as always from Ireland. And until the next video, guys. See you later, guys. Bye. I look after them animals, yeah? And they'll look after you.